Hello everyone. Today we're looking at populism in Peru, specifically in relation to politicians such as Alberto Fujimori, as well as Alante Humala. Within the past century, populism in Latin America has been associated with pol political leaders that were linked with nationalism, military repression, divisive discourse, and suppression of rights in order to better serve the people. Peru is no exception to this rule. The year is 1920, and Peru feels its first form of populism in the shape of the politician Haya de la Torre, who was charismatic, emphasized religious rhetoric, and used divisive discourse to pit the middle and working class against the oligarchy, also known as the elites. Although Haya would never become president of Peru, he would go on to establish the American Revolutionary Popular Alliance, or better known as APRA, which would play a key role in politics in the years to come. From 1945 to 1975, Peru's political order resembled that of a pendulum on a clock. In that it's way between democratic civilian-led governments, in which the Peruvian population elected their officials, and military backed governments. This instability in political leadership may have laid the foundation for populist politics in the years to come. The military government of 1975, led by General Juan Velasco Alvarado, promoted divisionary action between social classes. However, this government was ill-received by the Peruvian people, seeing as they had conflicting opinions with the idea of democracy and military-led governments. Politicians then realized that dem democratic elections were necessary in order to obtain credibility among the Peruvian people, and that Peru had grown weary of military presence in politics. By the late 1980s, Peru was suffering from what is now known as the Latin American Debt Crisis, during which time, many Latin American countries were unable to repay their foreign debts and thus suffered great economic losses. International reserves in Peru were running low, and as a result, by 1989, Peru's annual inflation was above 2,000%, and the minimum wage was 23%, that of 1980s. By 1990, the Peruvian population were fed up and ready for drastic change in leadership. As a response to this issue, Peru elected the government of Alberto Fujimori. To Fujimori, the oligarchy was not the enemy of the state, but rather the, en the entire idea of political classes was. He was neither charismatic nor particularly liked, but rather he was needed, and thus ruled with the military assistance. Fujimori promised economic changes, which ultimately led to Peru's renegotiating its international debt and returning to the good graces within the international financial community. By 1995, Fujimori was credited with the Peru's successful economic recovery and in turn was re-elected. While in office, Fujimori was accused of for of performing various questionable acts, in 1992 he suspended the Peruvian constitution. By 93, a new constitution was drafted, which enabled Fujimori to seek re-election. And while in office, well over 3,000 political murders took place. During the six years after the forced res re resignation of Fujimori, finding on his government surfaced, which shocked and angered the Peruvian people. To top it off, Peru found itself once again in a slight economic downfall. It is in this time where we see the introduction of the charismatic military politician, Olanta Humala. He is new to politics, but offers ideas of nationalism and greater social inclusion within the government. His talk centered on the idea of division between classes and how international companies were reaping the benefits of the land without giving fair compensation to the people. He would go on to suggest higher tax on foreign and large companies in order to better Peru. To Humala, the key to victory was found in identifying the enemy of the state, and explaining how current government was allowing these gaps to continue. He did all he could to associate himself with the lower class and explain how he understood them and how he would be the voice of the people. He even went so far as to making his party logo have significance among the native Incan communities. During his political speeches, Humala would often exclaim how he was proud to have commanded troops to defend Peru. However, this militaristic mindset led him to have confrontational and divisive rhetoric. It seemed that he had a very unclear understanding of democracy, and he idolized military power. This militaristic talk may have been the key factor that led to his political loss in 2006, seeing as Peruvians were skeptical of military, of military center governments due to their historic past. That being said, by 2011, when Humala ran again for president, he seemed to have underwent a complete transformation and ultimately won the vote of the people. To sum it up, since 1920, populism has played a re recurring role in Peruvian politics and seems to have played a part in a continuous circle, in which a problem arises in the country, the population becomes displeased, a new leader emerges saying that they are the voice, said leader fixes the problem but ultimately creates a new issue, 
which in turn makes the people displeased and seeking new leadership. I hold the opinion that populism has neg- negatively affected the proving people, as it has made them skeptical of their government. If every leader claims to speak for the people, to only go and carry on illegal and immoral acts against said people, then eventually the population begins to question their government and see any politician as inherently corrupt and two-faced. Thus, they may see no need to participate in politics, or even worse, see no reason to follow legislation.